Today we're going to look at touch switches. We've all used them. Instead of having to throw some kind of switch lever, you just touch a panel or a keypad or whatever and the light comes on or the activity you've chosen activates. And we'll look at these and how we can use them in electronics and in model railway applications. In particular, we're looking at some very cheap hobby ones. You can see here that you can get them a set of 10 for only £1.90, pence each. If you buy them a greater quantity, of course, again, cheaper. So, what are they? Well, for a start, they're very small. As you can see, they're only 15mm by 11mm. They're very small, and most of them are based on the TTP223 indicated circuit. They work from a range of 2 volts to 5.5. So they're able to work with chips, microprocessors that are 5 volt processors and also 3.3 volt processors. Or if you're not going to use microprocessors, just use the 5 volt supply. They only have three pins, one for the ground, 0 volts, one for VCC, which is the, say, 5 volt supply. But it also, as you'll see, has a number of paths called A and B. They're used to configure the chip. If you put a blob of solder across the, the two pads up here, or across the two pads down here, then you're altering the activities to be expected from touching it. For example, if we leave them unbridged, then the output from this third pin here is normally sitting at zero volts. But when you touch the switch pad, it goes up to five volts. And it will stay at five volts as long as your finger is on that little panel. However, if you bridge a solder blob across A here, then you get the opposite. Now the output is normally at 5 volts and it will drop to 0 volts when you touch the panel and will stay at 0 volts as long as you keep your finger on the panel. So that's what A does. What does option B do? Well option B changes it from a momentary switch, in other words it's only changing state while your fingers on the button to a latching state. So we put a blob of solder across here, making that B link, and each time you touch the switch, it'll toggle its state from high to low, back to high, back to low. Let's have a look. So here they are. On the right we have the momentary configuration that only activates when touched and the let go stops on, off, on, off, on, off. On the left we have the latched configuration. Touch it once and it's on. Touch it once, it's off. Could be a Short touch, it could be a long touch, doesn't matter. It waits for you to let go. Momentary latching. Latching momentary. Your finger doesn't necessarily have to touch its proximity 
we'll take it as you can see there I'm probably at this point about four mil about four mil from the the plate right so let's have a quick look at the specification for it this is taken from the TTP223 specification its supply voltage as I said can be as low as 2 no more than 5.5 .5, so it sits happily in the 3.3 .3 volts or 5 volts it has a very low operating current measured in microamps so it's very handy for particularly portable equipment where the battery drain is important the output that you can expect from the I.O. must not exceed 8 milliamps so it's capable of driving for example a LED directly but you couldn't make it drive a motor directly we'll come to that So how do we use it? Well, if we want to use it to drive a higher current device, we can use a transistor. So touching the plate changes the output here. Changing the output here, bringing it high, will switch on a BC547, which allows current to flow through the relay. And then you can take those output terminals to switch higher current devices or higher voltage devices as an aside you don't normally see the zero at the top and the five at the bottom I had to do it that way because that's how it looks on the switch PCB we can also use the output to operate a point Here's an example. The output will be going high or low depending when you touch it. And that output will then go to the points controller. Easy points or, or, or whatever. Or it could feed into an easy bus input module or C bus input module. This is happily. I've added on a couple of LEDs because this output here is either high or low at any one time. If it's high, you get 5 volts here and 5 volts here, that LED won't light up. But you'll have 5 volts here and 0 volts here, so that LED will light. When that drops to 0, you now get a 5 volt potential difference between here and here, that will no light. You get 0, 0 here, so that will extinguish. So the LEDs will follow the point movements. Now that raises an interesting question because we said a moment ago that you only had a small gap here your finger didn't have to touch the plate to make it operate. So that raises the possibility of making our own control panels using touch switches rather than toggle switches. The benefits, there's no, no need to drill the panel to fit in switches and LEDs and all that kind of stuff. The panel can be one continuous surface. No ugly paint jobs, I mean by that you see people have to try and paint their track layout onto a piece of board and it's it never looks nice well some people use stick on tape and then sticky labels to indicate what point does what does indicators all avoided with touch switches and lastly 
a panel based on touch switches are easily changed. If you change your layout to add more points or to move a point, you don't have to create a new panel all over again. You can simply print out a new track plan and underneath that track plan move the switches around. How is that possible? Well, let's have a look. And here is the touch switch under a sheet of glass. It mustn't touch the glass. If I push it down further, the glass itself will make the contact, leave a small air space, and then it will operate each time you touch the glass. I've now placed a sheet of A4 paper under the glass. It would normally have the, the layout plan printed on it, of course. And then you would just touch the area on the printed plan to operate the points or accessories, lighting or whatever. If you prefer, you could use thin pliers I have here, or thin MDF, have the paper glued on top with a track plan, maybe varnished, maybe laminated or whatever, and you can still get it to work. If you don't want to go down the route of a glass panel. So that means we're able to print out colour panels, multicolour with all the legends and instructions, whatever, as well as the track plan. Here's a very simple example simulating a piece of control panel. Here's an example of a miniature control panel. I've fitted well, one momentary touch switch here and I fitted a latching switch here and here. So if I touch the momentary one, the motor rotates. The output from this one here is going to the transistor to handle a higher current for the motor. This one here is latching, one touch for on, one touch for off. Its output is going direct to the lead, it can handle that amount of current. And in the middle here we have a Y point and its output goes to and easy points to control a servo. So if I touch it once, the servo goes to one position, touch it again, different position. So the two end points are controlled by the touch on the panel. I've cut small slots in the card here to allow the LEDs to shine through. So as you change the, the point up here, you also change what's on the indicator so you know which way the points are set. And there's no drilling of the panel to fit LEDs or to fit switches. It's all done by touch. The touch switches don't recall the state they're in when the power goes off. When you apply power, they all go to their default states, whether that's high or low, depending on how you've set it. That means if you finish a session in the evening and you come back the next morning, 
and you switch the power on, they won't be at the settings you left them at necessarily. Which could be a problem or it could be a bonus because that way you always have a new start of day setting. Every time you switch on a, a different day, then all the points will go to the same setting that you need for the start of day operations. If you want, you can buy boards based on an upgrade, a TTP224 chip. What's well, exactly the same as the TTP223, except to get more pins, therefore can handle more touch panels. And they're handy for keypad operation. So that's it. Very handy. Any questions, comments or suggestions?